every vendor is talking about agentic AI right now, but there isn't always a lot of substance behind those claims. For Blue Planet, however, not only are you talking about the frameworks and strategies, but you've also got a product on the truck. Can you give us maybe a quick review of how Blue Plan is enabling AI strategies for the CSPs today? Everything we're doing on AI in Blue Planet is basically to improve or define new capabilities within our applications, right? And and the way we are doing that is twofold. First, we are as Blue Planet building out of the box AI applications or AI agents that basically are consumed by our different applications. We are uh, enabling our customers and partners to enrich those capabilities as well across our application. We announced at DTW that we were extending uh, a, one of our products that is called AI Studio to be an agentic framework. Mm-hmm. Basically, we are looking at that at three layers. First layer is the agentic core. It's really the ability to build, run, manage, and uh, obviously orchestrate AI agents across our different applications. Then the second layer is the agentic tooling. So as you uh, are aware, our applications cover a broad spectrum of the OSS use cases. And really the tooling that we're providing to the agent is the ability to access all that data and all those the richness of APIs that we are offering into our applications for the agents to create that new level of automation, right? Um, and I would say the third layer is the application itself how the application is actually consuming the agentic capabilities. So across inventory, orchestration, uh, assurance, 5G slicing, etc. So really having that built-in capabilities of I'm building the different agents, sourcing from uh, the data and the APIs that we have connecting to uh, different types of LLM and then uh, those capabilities being consumed directly by uh, our application in a built-in fashion. Excellent. Got it. And you know, given where we are in the agentic life cycle, you know, what's the guidance that you give your CSP customers who are looking to engage with agentic AI because they've heard so much about that, right? Regarding which use cases they should start with? The, um, I mean, first of all, I think it's rare that we step onto a such type of technology that has such transformational power. So, um, I think the first, the way to approach the use case is really from a business process engineering standpoint, right? And there's uh, two aspects to it. One, which is optimization of the existing processes, you know, thinking of planning, operations, orchestration, etc. But there's also a component which is a transformational, right? So were we doing the things the right way before? Or can we just change the overall process to deliver it a new way, which the technology enable us to do? So really the first portion in terms of business process optimization is about increasing the productivity and the efficiency. And then the second one is about radically transforming the actual processes. And to give you, and, and these process can go a sequ- sequentially, right? You start by optimization and then you transform. And I give you an example. We are working on the 5G slicing and orchestration. And you know, there's two aspects that we are looking to improve at the moment, which is the ability for the system to actually better understand through natural language, the abstract intent of the user and to convert that into network resources, right? That's gonna be, that's a, a major use case from an autonomous network standpoint. Taking that piece as an example of converting an abstract intent, I want to see a drone, I want to have connectivity for a drone show. How does it translate into network resources? That's a use case by itself. Then, you know, that we can work and optimize. The second use case is on the the creation of services uh, through natural language. So the ability to create new uh, product within the catalog that can be uh, matching those intent. Individually, those two use cases bring a lot of efficiency and productivity, right? So improving the current processes. But combined together, it offers a new way to have a dynamic offering to the end consumer. I'm combining the optimization. I'm starting with the optimization of these pieces, but these optimization allow me to transform basically the type of products offered to the end customers. Interesting. Um, Are there any real world POCs that you can talk about or share, um, you know, from the customer base? Yeah. 
I mean, the use case I was uh, talking about, you know, our actual POCs that we are working with, uh, with customer, we also demoed those at uh, D2W this year, also part of a catalyst. So this is really kind of a, um, uh, an area that, uh, that we're working on. So that's the, uh, an area around the autonomous network, right? So this is one area that we're working on. The other area is um, looking at planning as an example. So uh, obviously planning is an important process within the carrier. It's everything starts with planning. So we are looking at ways we can leverage agents to actually um, do network optimization. So combining the power of the agents and the way it's interacting with the end user combined with a uh, graph neural network technologies that allow us to predict impact of changes uh, on network, depending if you, uh, you know, adding, uh, changing the routing of the network, adding capacity, um, either like link or routers on the network. So really kind of having a different perspective of the way you are actually planning uh, the network. Uh, and then we have also a series of, 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 of work that we're doing that's going to be in the products next year that are more system driven. So looking at the uh, uh, metadata generation. When you're deploying systems like we have in, in Blue Planet, there's a lot of configuration as well that needs to be done to adapt the specific needs of your uh, implementation. So how can we use generative AI and agentic technology to um, automate some of those uh, configuration generation, thinking about device models into the inventory, et cetera. So those elements that are very tactical, I would say. And the, uh, the other elements is everything that, um, it, it's really transforming the user experience into our different application and having a way more uh, conversational approach to how the data is accessed, yes, from the end user, but also enabling an ecosystem of outside agent that might uh, require, um, you know, knowledge from the OSS. I'd like to maybe, you know, touch on that last topic that you brought up around that user experience, around agents, around chat as an interface. You know, there is some chatter in the market regarding how generative AI and agentic could change the user experience. Um, uh, some even talk about you know, chat or Gen AI interfaces displacing traditional applications and being a very, you know, new layer over the data and agentic coming in and taking over orchestration. What are your thoughts about sort of these two elements around, you know, is it true that Gen AI is going to change the way we write applications or maybe displace applications altogether? And does agentic operations replace the need for orchestration? Application re will remain for the foreseeable future. But I think the fabric of those applications is going to progressively evolve uh, using the agentic technology. I mean, you're fully aware that orchestration is a massive field. I mean, there's when you work in that area, you know, there's service orchestration and you, you go all the layers of orchestration, the network. In addition, you have all those domains. And most of the carriers around the world are using multiple vendors, uh, equipment vendors. So we, you know, as an industry, we've worked um, years and years of standardizations to make, you know, all these elements talk together. And one thing that I learned from my past working in NFV and cloud native, uh, you know, networking is things going to be progressive, right? NFV in 2015 was like, you know, um, Great, obviously, from a use case standpoint, but it took years to basically move uh, networks to that uh, those new technologies. So it won't be different here with agents. From a timeline standpoint, or at least from a uh, progress, the interfaces, right? That's kind of the first element that's going to be changing uh, from an orchestration standpoint. Northbound and southbound. So the way the, the catalogs of services are exposed to BSS, as an example, or to a portal, uh, that's going to change using the, uh, the agent first, same thing with, you know, the integration with the controllers, et cetera, that's going to change. But then within the orchestration, we need to understand, you know, what are the processes that are highly deterministic and which one are, uh, can have some probabilistic aspect that are introduced by agent, right? So. Uh, from there, we're going to see like a progressive transformation of the stack, as well as when, as the technology also of the agent side is evolving to uh, transform our, our today's workflows or intent are actually 
enable, that's going to progressively change within orchestration. I see that as changing the fabric uh, of orchestration, changing the uh, interfaces, and obviously, you know, all the different workflows that should really in, internally. So JP, for CSPs wanting to take this agentic or Gen AI journey, what are the foundation layers that have to be in place for them to be successful? When we uh, design agents, there's a uh, uh, three important components. There is the agent itself, so that's the software program that you're describing. Then there's connections to LLMs, basically to provide that uh, reasoning. But from a domain that is highly complex like uh, networks and telecom, the tools that the agent's going to use to basically understand and take actions on different various elements of the network these are crucial pieces and in the um you know in the history of blue planet we have created a really strong uh, portfolio of application on the oss side that will provide that data and those uh, apis that can be leveraged by the agents to take action on the network so when we're thinking about that data layer we're looking at products like our uh, Blue Planet inventory that, that have the different layers of the network. Um, uh, looking at the uh, topologies, uh, virtual topologies, physical topologies, all the different devices, how the, net, the, the layers of the network are stitched together. We're looking at a full uh, intent-based orchestration through our uh, Blue Planet orchestration software. We have also all the routing within the network, the IGP, the BGP uh, protocols, also the path computation. So we have all those different assets that are part of the Blue Planet ecosystem that are now exposed to the agents. So from the get-go, from the day one, you are deploying your agentic, the AI studio with the agentic framework. Now you can create agents that leverages all those different assets to deliver new automation capabilities.